In this sample app walkthrough, we're going to show you how you can take a GPS point and plot it on top of Google Maps using Map Suite. And so we're going to go over a couple different concepts in this sample, such as how to reproject the point to match the coordinate system that Google Maps uses, and then how to add that point to an in memory feature layer and display it on top of the Google Maps overlay. So let's go ahead and run this application. You'll see it's just a very basic sample app, and what we've got here is we've got a red square dot in the middle of our map. And we've got a label on this showing uh, uh, the coordinate in, uh, uh, you know, where that actual location in decimal degree format, or actually degrees, minutes, and seconds format, I should say. So, and then as we move around the mouse, you'll see the X and Y coordinates down there change as well. Um, and so Google Maps actually uses a different uh, projection or coordinate system than your typical WGS84 um, locations that you get with your typical uh, GPS devices. So this sample is going to show you how to convert that, uh, that location you got so it'll overlay in the correct location on the Google Map. So let's take a look at the code and see how you would implement something like this. So I'm just going to come over here to our test form, go view code. And really, all the uh, all the important stuffs happening here in the uh, in the load of the form. So the first part, we're just setting our map unit. And if you're dealing with Google Maps and you you're, you're dealing in a um, a projection called spherical Mercator or Web Mercator, and that's a meter-based projection or coordinate system. So it's always good to remember that you need to set your map unit to meters if you're uh, using a Google Maps overlay. And here we're just setting a background brush, so if there is no map, this would be the default color that's displayed. And then here we're setting up our Google Map Overlay, and a Google Map Overlay takes a API key, so if you have that or you have an enterprise account with Google Maps, you can certainly specify that so you're in compliance with their licenses and so forth. And then uh, we tell it what type of map we want, so in this case we're doing terrain, but as you're probably aware, there's there's lots of different types of Google Maps. You know, the satellite, the hybrid, um, roadmap, etc. We'll leave it for terrain for now, and then we add that Google o over to that Google overlay to the the map control. So this code right here is just setting up a basic uh, Google overlay to display the the Google Maps as the background. Okay, next is we're going to tell the map control since we are using the Google Maps overlay, we want to we want to use the Google Map zoom level set. So it's important as if you are using one of these background providers like Google Maps or Bing that you use their same zoom level set so as you zoom in you don't get weird um, stretching of the images and things that come from these services. So that's what we're doing in this uh, line of code right here. And then down here is where we're going to start uh, writing some code to handle the actual location of the GPS point. So we're going to store this location in what we call an in-memory feature layer and we're going to call it a point layer. And then on this in memory feature layer, we actually want to define a column that's going to be associated with the point. So in this con time, we're just going to call it text, or you could call it label or name or, or whatever you want. So this is at the layer level. So we're going to say, hey, we want to open this. We want to add a column and name it text. And then later on, we're going to assign that value of text. And then here's where we start to get into some of the projection code. And um, if you're not familiar with projection, think of it as just switching between different coordinate systems. With maps, people want to see maps in various ways across the world um, and tailored to, uh, you know, to their location. And so Google Maps has, they're using Spherical Mercator or Web Mercator to have a good global view that, that keeps, you know, at least where most of the populations are, and to show this good maps. So, um, you know, GPS coordinates come in just WGS84 where the entire Earth is, you know, basically on one big plane or, or grid. And so that's where you get, you know, Greenland being gigantic and things of that nature. So that's why Google does that is to give a little better um, view of what the maps look like. So here we're going to we're going to project our GPS or get set up to where we can reproject our GPS point to match the projection that Google Maps is using. And to do that, we're going to use the Proj4 projection class. And actually, now with Map Suite, there's the new Manage Proj4. And I would recommend you use that instead. Um, because before in older versions, we didn't have a managed version, but now we do. So um, that's what I would recommend you, you set up. And there's a constructor on this, too. Um, oh, I just got to do this. I'm sorry. 
So then on the projection, we need to uh, um, set what we're going from and where we're going to. So here we're saying uh, our internal projection of this in-memory feature layer is going to be for the ESPG parameter string 4326, which is equal, if you look this up on like spatialreference.org, it will be the uh, WGS84, what you typically call longitude and latitude coordinates. And then we want to go to our external projection string, which is where we're going from. So this is our source and this is our target. And because Google is so popular, we have a, a method off of here that just says get Google map parameter strings. And Google also has a number um, that references its projection as well, but I don't know that off the top of the, my head. And I usually just use this method call because it accomplishes the same thing. So this is basically code telling it anything we add to this in memory feature layer, we want to convert to the Google projection. And then once we have that object set up, we just need to set that, um, assign that to the projection property off of the feature source on that layer. So that'll automatically handle anything that we add to this layer um, in longitude or latitude and convert it to, uh, to the Google projection. So here's where we're actually uh, assigning our longitude and latitude values that you would you know, probably receive from your GPS receiver or some other mechanism. And we're going to go ahead and create a feature based on these um, by creating the point shape and passing in that longitude and latitude. And then here we're going to convert just the, uh, um, the X and the Y values, these to that degrees, minutes, and seconds um, string that you saw when we first loaded the map where it had the comma and the things like that. So we're using the decimal degree helper and then using the get degree minutes second string from decimal degree point method and passing in that feature. And there's other overloads on here too where you could just pass in the X and Y but we're just passing in the feature in this case. And then down here we're assigning that uh, text column that we we set up when we created our in-memory layer and assigning it that long lat value that we get returned from this method here. So if you were to put a breakpoint on this, it would show that uh, you know, this is where we've converted this to the more, I guess, fancy looking um, string of where there's commas and the degrees, minutes, seconds that a lot of people are accustomed to. Now that we've got our feature added, um, we've got our, 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 our text for our label added and everything on our layer, now all we need to do is tell the map control how we want to render that point. And, and how we want to display that label. So we're doing that here with the uh, default point style. And we're just creating a simple point style that's a square with you know a red fill and a black outline using this code here. And then on this one we're creating a default text style which is going to handle our label. And we're just creating a simple text style using Arial 12 and bold and you know the colors that we want. So if you want to change the labels or how the point is displayed you can modify this code however you like. And then here we're just applying that style for all the zoom levels. So if you wanted to change it, so you used a bigger font when you zoomed in or, or a smaller font when you zoomed out or, or vice versa, you can do all of that here and apply it to different zoom levels, each of these styles. Then down here we're just going to take that layer that we created with our one point and uh, add it to a, a new layer overlay. So we create a point overlay to hold this layer and then we add that uh, um, point layer to that overlay and then finally add that overlay to the map. So think of overlays as just grouping of your data. So in this sample we've got two overlays. We've got one with our Google you know, base map and then uh, one uh, overlay that just has one layer that contains our GPS point. So you know you can add multiple layers to one overlay and I'd recommend that in most cases but in this case we only have one layer so um, we're only doing that. And then uh, down here, we're, uh, we're opening our, our projection um, um, class because we're going we're gonna to want to zoom in the map into where this longitude and latitude value actually is. So we're just getting the vertex um, of where that, that is in the Google format. And then down here, we're um, creating a rectangle shape based on that vertex. And there's actually some code that can simplify this a great deal. But um, this is setting our current extent, basically, where you're zooming the map in to that area of that longitude and latitude. So this is just doing an on-the-fly conversion of that. And then here we're just creating a rectangle shape, and we're, we're, in effect, buffering that point so we zoom in accordingly. And then just refresh the map. And the only other code we have in this sample is down here um, where we're doing a mouse move to, to update the status bar. And the end result you'll see is we've got our, uh, our Google background map. 
And we've got a point here with the, the red fill and the black background and, and our text label you know, that uh, we got from converting our longitude and latitude coordinates to the decimal degree minutes seconds format. And then our status bar down here that updates the coordinates. Um, and these are actually Google coordinates that you're seeing in the status bar as I move the map around. So I hope this sample app walkthrough has been helpful. If you have any questions, um, feel free to contact us, or you can also post them directly on our discussion forums at thinkgeo.com forums. Thank you for watching.